Hi and welcome to What to Expect When You're Selecting. Um, this is our part two of chatting with Stephen Sims from Sims White Architects. Um, we're here just to finish the part two and have a chat about, firstly, some trends um, that you're seeing in architecture um, recently. So just getting your feedback on what's sort of in at the moment. What, what are people enjoying um, on their builds? Okay, so... Um Certainly in, in the housing space, um, there's, there's two main things we're seeing. There's still a lot of people that love their Hamptons, love their mouldings, love that over-the-top um, cookie, yeah. uh, what's the word, Ice, icing on the cake yeah. um, style. Um, and, you know, that, it's actually very similar to the, the Queenslander style, um, yeah. but probably a bit more elaborate. Um, and then um, the other thing we're seeing uh, is, is the very sleek sort of pared down um, gable, gable roof buildings like like our building here is a little bit like that. Um, so there's a lot of um, like traditional building forms, but clipped back with no eaves and, and very simple forms, very strong geometry. So um, it, it's kind of almost like a modernist building, like a real minimalist built minimalist building married to uh, a traditional building. So. Yep. We saw that style um, recently on a trip in New Zealand, actually, mm. and fell in love with it. Um, that and and it was very much that style that you're describing, very minimalist, but also those sort of hard lines as well um, on the exterior. Um, we really enjoyed that. Yeah. So, Steve, in designing a home, you see a lot of homes around uh, Toowoomba, especially with a lot of mixed media. So there's a lot going on in some of the houses with up to five different um, types of claddings and and things like that for the front facade. So what's your thoughts on that? Um... Look, I, I think it, it depends on the on the type of building. So, I mean, you, you've been to our house, it's an old Queenslander. Something like the Hampton style, you can certainly get away with a lot of different colours and a lot of, a lot of mixed material because the house lends itself to that. If the house is something simpler uh, and has, has, has more pared back lines and has square roofs and uh, or simple forms, it just starts to look confused and, and, yeah. and overdone. Uh, and certainly, um, look, one of the things we try to implement in our in our practice and in our office is to limit materials to about three yep. and to limit colours to about three. And it, it just actually makes the whole project more cohesive. So, Stephen, when someone's building a home, um, a lot of the time you're focused on the project at hand, you're focused on getting the block of land and getting that house built. Um, but you talked to us before a little bit about master planning. Can you explain the importance of that when you're in those early stages of construction or even in those early planning stages? Yep. So like, like we sort of said, you know, this is the biggest investment a lot of people are going to make. And even, even though our fees can be substantial on the project, um, it's a lot cheaper to pay me to put lines on a page than it is to pay Carl to put something up and pull it down again or to do a renovation later on. So part of what we try to do in trying to understand our clients, one of the questions we ask them is, why are you building this house? Is it, is, it, is it something that you're going to live in for 10 years and then sell and move on? Is it your forever home? If, if that's the case, are you going to be here till you're 70, 80? So we actually try to start to think about those things and build those into the, into the design. So, um, you know, and, and it might be that they can only afford to do part of that in one stage, but if you've got that master plan, which is it's, it's a fancy word of saying we've, we've planned to build this in multiple stages, you've actually thought through this is stage one, this is stage two, this is yep. stage three, yep. so that when you come to build stage two, it's actually going to work yeah. uh, and that you, you've not got something in the way. Um, you're, not trying to, you're not trying to stick a pool in and then finding out, oh, you can't have it there because of, you know, there's things running underground or whatever. That's right. So, it, it, look, it's a really important thing, but it's also a way of managing budget as well. If a project comes in over budget and you've, you've designed it yeah. in stages, it's very easy to actually say, well, look, we can do that piece later. Um, or we can look at um, how we could, could make that, that piece smaller. It's almost, and, and it doesn't need to lead to design that's, that's bitsy or clunky. Um, particularly if it's been thought through and designed in from the start. So I guess that's the importance of 
that time spent with clients at the front end and really actually trying to work through through that with them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. We've really appreciated your advice today and we love working with you on projects. Um, You really know your stuff and we appreciate that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Dave.